Good morning, folks. We've got a few solar eruptions to discuss today. We've got some space news, atmospheric patterns, and an earthquake warning. But we begin over at spaceweathernews.com, and we're finding the last 24 hours offered calm in the Earth-facing heliographic longitudes, but some snaps and pops at the limb can be seen. We didn't get any more solar flares as these incoming sunspots are now under the earth face and quiet effect. The CME they did let loose with that filament yesterday has now been downgraded in speed to 1,000 kilometers per second after Cactus initially clocked it over 2,000 and then revised to 1,500. We're going to watch the last few hours of AIA 211 here. Focus on the limbs. We've got pops going off in multiple directions after that first one you saw yesterday opened the door. They won't hit Earth, however, and neither has the next coronal hole stream. Slightly increased density hasn't yet led to faster particles, and we're very calm in our magnetic field. Now, even though the CMEs won't hit Earth, they could couple as they hit 1 AU starting tonight, just as the big coronal hole begins crossing center disk. Eyes open for the shaking to come. The largest quake of the last day actually did hit magnitude 6, but as usual, it's still blacklisted and not red because in this part of the world, that's just not that big of a deal. Bigger rumbles expected this weekend. Let's jump way out to a galaxy spotted by Hubble breaking the rules. How fitting as we just discussed the problems with black hole physics, and now we can add another tally to the list. The spectrum and brightness of the galaxy center appears too dim to be a black hole and they are scratching their heads. Up next, we're at Saturn, where Cassini is set to do some amazing ring dives before its demise this September. Read all about it in the linked article. And finally, we're back at Earth, albeit at the top of the sky. We're seeing icon and gold-like data with ionospheric winds, oxygen excitation in the color bands, and of course, the Earth's version of coronal magnetic fields, the arches representing one of the lowest level L-shells of our magnetosphere. Let's come down to the ground where the U.S. has gotten both sides of the extremes, having taken a hacksaw to the drought out west, dropped unthinkable amounts of snow in a short period of time in other places. Folks just wouldn't feel right to leave out severe weather. It crops up in New Mexico tonight, but gets really dangerous tomorrow as it heads through Texas. Other weather note right now is the convergence coming up from the Earth spot south of New Zealand. We're hoping it flounders and weakens, but... Eyes open, Kiwis, it's heading for the North Island now. Time for a weather review so you remember you don't need anyone to predict the weather but yourself. Pressure cells here with purple to red as low, and now watch as I pull the precipitable water overlay. The cells draw the tropical moisture away from the equator and along the convergence lines. Along that line, it gets transformed into clouds, and then once it hits the cell, this drives the rain and snow and storms that we call weather around the world. It truly is that simple to know if you've got something coming your way. Folks, if you missed it yesterday, Billy and I got Stephen Shaw and Hook Echo on the line discussing earthquake forecasting. You can find that on YouTube, but it's also a free episode of Deeper Look, so you can find it there as well. That topic will be a major one at Observing the Frontier 2017. We've also got Doctors Robitaille, Claridge and Dunning, Dave Talbot, Eugene Bagashoff, and more. Folks, there are only 20 tickets left as of this morning. We'll get the other areas of the world on pressure and radar forecast, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.